Hi, this is Brian with ActiveMelody.com. Well, for this week's guitar lesson, we're going old school country. And this is one of my favorite styles of playing because it's slow, it's sad, it's emotional. It's got everything that makes guitar playing cool. And uh, this is somewhere between rhythm and lead playing. There's some fill licks. It's all kind of thrown together into one composition. But most of the country stuff you find online is super fast. It's flashy. It's the chicken picking stuff. Uh, but this is going a completely different direction, and we're tapping into more of the emotional side of playing. So I'm going to break down everything note for note and show you how to play it, but more importantly, I'm going to show you where those notes come from so that you can start to use this in your own playing. And you can use this whether you're playing country or rock or blues. All these looks will translate to other styles of playing. So I've got the lesson split into two parts. In this video, we'll take a look at the first half. If you'd like to watch the second half, as well as download the tablature, and the mp3 jam track so that you can practice playing along all the stuff we're going to learn you can get that by going to activemelody.com go to the weekly lessons page and do a search for ep274 all right so let's talk about the chords that are used and the structure of this song and then we'll talk about how to count it in and then we'll get into the specific legs so the song is very simple in terms of a chord structure there's four chords they're all major chords no minor chords uh, it starts with a D chord, and that would be your one chord. So your one chord is a D, your two chord is an E. Now that's, normally your two chord is a minor chord. You, you have a major one, you have the minor two. But in country a lot of times, you'll take that, minor, that two chord and make it major. So keep that in mind if you're trying to write a country song. Uh, so you have your one chord, your major two chord, and then your four chord, which is a G and then the five chord, which is an A. So one, major two, four, five. That's the number format. This is D, E, G, and A. Now the way you count this in, um, when you're listening to the jam track, the first uh, thing you'll hear will be the click track. It'll be four clicks, that's just to get the tempo. And then you'll hear the band kick in in measure one, but you're not gonna play yet. So it kicks in like this. One, two, three, four. But that, that's just what the bass player is doing. Um, you're gonna hold off and start on measure two. So when you're looking at the tablature, you don't play anything, or when you're listening to the jam track, don't play anything right away. Wait for that, that pickup, and that makes sense, it's intuitive. And then once we get to the one of the next measure, you start with... Let's learn that first lick there. Now we're going to be playing out of... Um, I'm playing a D chord right here using the A chord shape. Now a lot of this is going to be a refresher on the caged system which is in lesson EP273. So you might want to check that one out as a refresher if you're not familiar with these chord shapes I'm talking about. Um, so I'm going to be playing, actually, if that's the A shape, we're, this is the bottom part of the G shape, and I covered that in that lesson. So the first part of that lick sounds like this. And we're going to bar the first four strings there on the seventh fret and play strings three and four, downstroke with the right hand. And we're going to do a hammer onto the ninth fret, fourth string and then just play strings three and four there. So keep that bar down the whole time. And then you're gonna do it again. And this time, keeping the bar there, my middle finger goes to the eighth fret, fifth string, 
and I do a hammer on to the ninth fret fifth string. So all together, that's that first lick. Now that's huge, and so that's a big takeaway. Just that lick there, that's another word that you can add to your vocabulary now. So if you were playing something in C, look at that little fill lick. So start to play around with these licks and you know how can you use them in other things? Um, that's when you really start to become a player, when you can not think of them in terms of just this composition, but it starts to like light bulbs go off and you go, oh, okay, I can use this in anything. Okay. Now that's the first thing. Now remember, the second chord we're about to go to goes to an E. And what I played was... Sounds kind of cool, kind of jazzy. But all I did was I went to, instead of just playing an E major chord, I played an E9 chord. So remember, you can substitute chords. You don't have to always play... I could have played E7, E6, and E13. As long as it's a major chord, I couldn't play a minor, that wouldn't work. But that any major version of the chord I could do. So all I'm doing is, if you think of your E9 chord like that, but just look at the top four strings. It's super easy to play. You bar the first three strings on the seventh fret, and then index finger is on the sixth fret fourth string. So that's your E9 chord. But to get to it, I walk down. This is all on the fourth string here, so it starts on the ninth fret. It goes nine, eight, seven, six. And once I come to the six, I play that with my index finger so I can go. Okay, so we have. All right, from the beginning, we have. Now, while I'm holding that chord. My pinky comes up here to the ninth fret first string, and I brush the top three strings there. That makes that an E13 chord. Nice sound. And then I play it without the pinky on. So now that's a triplet. Triplet. When you look at the tab, you'll see a little uh, a little line with a three over it. You have a staggered feel from the time. Okay, and then it goes down to the G chord, or your four chord, but I do a transition chord to get there. And all I'm playing is the top part, it's really just a triad for, of an A chord. So think of your A major bar chord right there. I'm just playing, um, barring the first two strings here on the fifth fret, middle fingers on the sixth fret, third string. And I play that triad there, it's just an A chord, as a transition to get us down to the G. It's a nice passing chord, I guess. And then when I come to the G chord, the way that I'm playing that is the same chord that we just played with the A, but I add my ring finger there on the 5th fret 4th string. It just gives it another note. I find that easier than making a full bar chord. I don't usually ever play a full bar chord. I, don't, I haven't found a lot of use for that. If you're playing finger style by yourself, you're going to need to do it. But when you're playing with a band like that, you've got the bass covering the low notes. And I think that's enough of, of, of a chord. And I see other guys around Nashville doing that, so I figure that's okay. Um, all right, from the beginning we have. Okay, and then. Isn't that nice? We're just going from a G chord to an A chord. So I'm taking that same shape and walking it up two frets, four chord to the five chord, but I added a little bit of a melody line in there. On the first string. My pinky goes down on the 5th fret 1st string, and then I go ahead and slide up to the 7th fret 1st string. So we have... And then, I put down the A chord. That's another takeaway. When you're thinking about going from the 4 chord to the 5 chord, you can play little melodies, especially, and that's another reason I like making this chord shape instead of the full bar. I've got my pinky free to do... Little, you know, little embellishments around a chord. Little things like that. It makes it, it just enhances the chord shape. It doesn't make it just so stagnant, I guess, where it stays. Then after we play the A, there's this lick that goes... And then gets us back to the D. Now, I'm playing all of that over the A chord. And I want you, I'll show you how to play it, but I want you to connect it back to this chord shape. And that would be your E chord shape out of cage. Um, that way you can use it in other things. So 
to play the lick, I'm going to bar the first two strings here on the fifth fret. My ring finger, keep that bar there, ring finger goes down on the seventh fret second string. And then I do a half bend. So I keep that uh, fifth fret first string while I bend. And remember, don't do a full bend. And then you release it. Now, if that's too difficult to try and do that bend, maybe you've got, you know, you're playing, playing this on an acoustic or something, you could just slide up to the note. That works just as well. Um, but I think it sounds a little more country, a little more pedal steel like if you do the bend. So then we're back to that fifth fret, second string. Middle finger goes down on the sixth fret, third string. Look at what we've done. That's that A chord again. There's that A triad. So all I did in my mind, I'm just picturing that A chord shape there. And I'm just playing notes around it. And the reason I said to pay attention to that chord shape is if you if you can think of it that way, if you wanted to play this in C, there's your C bar, bar chord, right? You could play that in any key now, going forward, in any style of music. So, and then that last note there is where the song goes back to the one chord or the D chord, and I'm just playing the seventh fret third string. All right, so let me back up and play us up to that point. We have one, two, three, four. Now that would be where the one chord is, which is your D chord. And I was picturing the D chord down here. And so to get down there, I went little uh, trill thing that you hear a lot of times. And when you hear that, that's usually always done on the same string. So it makes it a little bit easier than it sounds. So I'm playing that on the third string. I'm just walking down the major scale to get down to this D chord shape, just your D chord in first position. So that's the seventh fret, third string. Uh, and that's the 6th fret 3rd string, and we're going to start with the 7th fret, and then you go to the 6th fret, do a hammer-on, and a pull-off, like that. So slowly it goes. And then you're going to come down to the 4th fret 3rd string, and you're going to do a hammer-on between the 4th fret and the 6th fret on the 3rd string. That's a great technique that you can use playing up and down any scale that you know. It could be minor pentatonic, it could be major uh, scale, it could be a minor scale, but it's just a... It's kind of a fun way to get down, walk up or down a scale. And then once I came down to here, which is the second fret third string, I'm already in my D chord. And so what I did was I went ahead and barred the first three, three strings there on the second fret, and then I played this. Now some of you would say, wait, what is that? I thought you were talking about a D chord. This is a D chord. But look, it's using that C chord shape. So back to the caged thing. This is why caged is so, so important. I hope, hopefully this will start to reiterate some of the points we covered in last week's lesson. Uh, now I'm not playing it with my pinky. I'm just playing it like this. I'm actually playing strings 4, 3, and 2. So I'm going to pick on the 4th string. Uh, and I, by the way, I've got my ring finger on the 4th fret 4th string. Well, I've got the bar there on the second string, and my middle finger is down on the third fret second string. So you can see if I took that finger away, that's just your D chord. I'm just using different fingering than maybe you're used to. But then by adding this, you can create a lower note in that chord. So backing up, we have... That's how that works. walking right into this lead part. So this is where we're blending chords and scales a little bit. Um, so you're not, it's not rhythm, it's not lead, it's kind of a combination. There's those three strings, and again I'm picking on the fourth string and I'm plucking, I'm using some hybrid picking here, I'm plucking my middle finger on the third string, ring finger on the second string. Hear how it gives that poppy sound? I think that is, uh, the reason I, I'm using my finger is I get that uh, a little more of a country twang. When you pop in the strings like that, it, it creates a different feeling. So keep that in mind. So we have, then my ring finger comes up here to the 5th fret 2nd string. 
play that note, and then I do a full bend, slowly though. And then once I get to the top of that bend, my pinky goes down on the fifth fret first string. And then I release the bend. I pick the second string again and release it. So all together. And then I come down to the third fret second string. Now some of you are saying, where is that? Where are we at? I'm lost. Well, this is just, remember we're, in, we're playing over a D chord, right? Well, I'm just in the major pentatonic scale. Uh, this would be pattern four for D. But it's right there. Hopefully you can start to connect that back to these chord shapes though. Pattern four connects nicely to this chord shape. Ah, that's huge, right? So you've got your C chord shape. So you can see when you're playing your D chord using this chord shape that your middle finger is already playing one of the notes out of that major pentatonic scale pattern four. So your pattern four major pentatonic scale, not minor, but major for the key of D is right there. And see how it connects back to that chord shape. So going forward, if you're playing that chord shape in any key, you can play these same licks in, in any key. Okay, so, um, and then the song goes to the E chord, right? And what I ended up playing there was, so to, over that E chord, I've got my, uh, this would be pattern three of the major pentatonic scale for E. So now we've, we're playing the chord changes here. So we've switched the scale to match this chord. I know it sounds complicated, but it's really not. It's just chord shapes in my mind. That's all this stuff is. So I know I've got this little uh, harmonized sounding bend that you can use uh, for E. So I'm using uh, the fifth fret second string. And then my middle finger is on the fourth fret third string. And I keep this finger locked down. It's kind of hard to do. And I do a full bend with my middle finger there. Now notice I'm using these two fingers to pluck with my right hand here. I'm not picking that. Actually, I, I take that back. I use my middle finger and ring finger because I'm holding the pick with that. So it goes. And then I played. So that is just playing my index finger here on the second fret third string but I'm also plucking at the same time with my ring finger plucking the open E string and then we come down to here and that's just an E chord right I'm just playing strings one and three out of an E chord and then I come up to this chord shape think of your E chord here using the D chord shape play strings three and one out of that that's all I'm doing there um, so a lot of this is uh, just things that you'll learn over time. I know I've got a, a country sounding uh, lick in E right there. And I also know that I've got these double stops in E. I didn't have to think about it too hard. It's just sort of something that you'll get over time. And now you've got these licks and you can start to think about how you can use them. Okay, and then it goes to the G. And all I did was I played that same G like I just showed you, where we're using those four uh, strings there. And I've got my free pinky, like we talked about. I can hammer on now to the fifth fret second string. It's a nice kind of pedal steel sounding leg. Now, then it goes to the five chord and I can just take that same shape and do the same thing, just the up two frets. So over the A. I came up here, pinky goes down again, this time on the seventh fret, second string. I played that, and then this is really cool, watch this. To go back down to the D chord from the A chord. All I'm doing is I'm playing an A6 chord, walking it down to an A9 chord, and then down to the D chord. Some of you are going, what? A6, A9? This is a takeaway, so remember this. Look at your A major bar chord here. And if you look at this A6 chord, let me show you how to make that chord. 
Uh, let's look at just these three fingers. It's making a D7 chord shape. So think of your D7 in first position. You can make that chord shape right here. So your pinky and your ring finger are on the seventh fret, strings two and four. Your middle finger is on the sixth fret, string three. And then your index finger is on the fifth fret, first string. That's an A6 chord. Now look at how that chord lives within your A major bar chord. Oh, okay, so I can always make a sixth chord now. It's going to take some practice to get your hand to go into that quickly, but it's not a difficult chord to make. So if I said play a G6 chord now, you could go, okay, that's a G chord. There's your G6 chord. Okay, if that's an A6, if I slide that down two frets, that's an A9 chord. So that's a huge takeaway. Now I've got this real bluesy, jazzy uh, version of an A chord that I can slide up and down. Uh, and I can use these sort of interchangeably. And you hear this a lot. In, in blues and, and everything. So it's not, this is not just, these are not just country legs. But there's a passing chord in between. So we go down a half step, then go down again. And then I go back down to that D chord using the C chord shape. All right, so there's one other part to this, which is this cool walk-up that goes. And then we go to the G chord. So that's a nice way to go from that uh, D to the G chord, which is kind of the second part of the song. I'll show you this walk-up, and then I'll, I'll recap everything, and that'll be the end of this part one. But let me show you this. This is cool. This is something you can use a lot. So from this D chord shape, we're going to uh, keep... Are the bar there, and by the way, I'm picking on the fourth string, plucking with these two fingers on strings two and three. That way I can get real precise control as opposed to strumming. I think it sounds a little better. Uh, from, from this chord shape, we're going to slide everything up. I'm going to keep that bar there, barring the first four strings, this time on the third fret. Now my pinky and my ring finger are on the fifth fret, strings two and uh, four. Just playing those middle strings. Doesn't that sound nice? But I can take this shape now and walk it all the way up. It sounds like this. And that's exactly what I did there. And then I go to the to the G chord. But look at how I'm making the G chord. I'm using the C chord shape. Same shape we used when we played the D chord. I'm just playing it up here. Now it's a G chord, playing strings 4, 3, and 2. Now, another variation on that, you could go... And all I'm doing there is just 2, 3, 4, 2, 3, 4. That's what, another reason why hybrid picking is so handy. It allows you to do something like that much easier. So that's where we're going to end this part one. That's a lot of information. Let me back up now and I'll play through all of that uh, from the beginning. And then I'll see you in part two for the second half. So here we go. One, two, three, four. <laughs>